In this video, guys, we're gonna look at trading corn. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. So, one of the bigger commodities out there, one of the most popular commodities out there, one of the sometimes volatile commodities out there is corn. So I'm gonna look at corn, what it's all about, what are the tendencies, where it's grown, what can affect it, and most importantly for us as traders, how can we potentially capitalize on trading opportunities, supply demand imbalances in this specific commodity. Okay, so corn is planted in the spring, and it's harvested in the autumn or fall if you're from the US. So the growing season is the most volatile. So that spring to harvest uh, kind of season is really where the volatility kicks in potentially. And you can see why, right? Because anything that potentially could damage the crop, whether it's weather, whether it's some other kind of impact, then that is gonna have a significant effect on price. People are gonna be nervous, they're gonna be buying corn in quickly, they're gonna have to pay a lot of money for it, supply demand imbalance is gonna shift out the way. So obviously that's when we get the most volatility. After that, in the winter season, generally things are dying down. It's all generally about the demand rather than the supply side of stuff. So how is the demand faring for corn? But anyway, move on to that in a second. Anyway, the planting intentions. What's the planting intentions? So the USDA work out how much acreage farmers intend to allocate or dedicate to corn growth. So my assumption is that they ring up or they contact them and they fill out a form. I'm not quite sure the whole details of it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is they have a number which says, hey, we've got this farmer, he's gonna have 100 acres, this farmer's gonna give 500 acres, add it all up and they release that and say, this is the number of acres that in farmers are intending to allocate to corn. Now, will they follow through on that? Who knows whether that uh, they actually will or not, but that's gonna give us a rough idea. And this is gonna be the farmer's choice of whether they start to plant soybeans, whether they plant corn, what they plant in their fields. And so this then gives us a rough idea of the expected crop size, because we can take the acres, multiply by the trend yield, so how much yield we expect to get from that acre, and give us an expected crop size. So now, Everyone has this information, this is what we expect the crop to be, and the price is gonna settle based on that. If it's expected to be a bumper crop, of course, price is gonna head lower. If it expects it to be a crop way less than expected, and they think, oh, actually, we're gonna have far less corn than we really need, price is gonna to start to rock it. And then, of course, we have the whole growing season to, to contend with as well. So 40% of corn goes into ethanol production. A little side note here that's kind of on 45 degrees is that cheap corn plus high oil equals high ethanol demand because obviously uh, you, that makes perfect sense in that cheap corn is out there, so ethanol is gonna maybe potentially be cheaper because it goes into production of it. If high oil, maybe people aren't gonna use so much crude oil, gonna move to ethanol, demand for ethanol picks up, and then we start to get that shift back and it's the whole kind of money flow back and forth in that triangle. So the rest of it, the rest of the corn, uh, goes to feed livestock. So for animal feeds, etc. only a very small, part of it is humans. Uh, weather, as with a lot of commodities, is the big one, especially the commodities that are growing, of course. Uh, extreme heat and droughts in the Midwest are the biggest fear for farmers and corn traders. Well, maybe not if you're uh, if you're long, but they're the biggest fear in terms of volatility. So uh, any, any heat or drought that's causing the soil to crack, uh, there's no moisture there for the plants to grow. You know, I'm not a farmer, but you know, we understand what makes stuff grow out there. And if it's not conducive, the best growing conditions, um, then the crop may well not yield as much as people expect. Of course, less corn, supply demand, uh, supply demand theory, less corn, assuming the same kind of demand, less supply, uh, you know what's gonna happen, it's gonna move the price to the upside and, and vice versa. If it's a real bumper crop, of course, and the conditions have been really, really good and everyone's been working on average conditions, it might be a massive oversupply of corn, assuming demand may remain static, that's gonna depress the price. All right, so the states to watch for the weather forecast to see if we get this hot, dry spell or extreme heat, and we've got Iowa, Nebraska, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. So those are the biggest states that are producers of corn. Um, 
Generally speaking, and this is a generalization, um, usually the highs in corn are seen in the late June, early July, and the lows are seen in November. That's a generalization going back over many, many years, but that tends to be the flow of price. And of, uh, quite often corn can spike quite dramatically and then demand really does back off for it and then it settles down again. It's quite a, quite a responsive market and go and check it out um, for yourself. Finviz is a great place to look at it if you don't have access to commodities elsewhere, finviz.com and Agrim Money is a great place to look at news flow surrounding corn. So those two things are kind of a good traders, useful tool to have in your, tool, in your toolkit uh, to get an idea on what corn potentially could be doing. Now, is it something you want to trade regularly? If so, you've got a spread bet, you've got a CFD, futures contract, options contract, and an ETF to choose from. However, it may be something that you have a bit of knowledge of how it all works. Maybe you, this spurs you on to go and do a bit more research. You kind of go and check out and see a little bit more about what's affecting it at the moment, what how funds are positioned, this and that, all the intricacies of it, so that you're prepared if they have some kind of extreme heat in some of the high producing corn areas. Maybe then you can tr trade an opportunity uh, that presents itself on corn, go in, hit and run out, make some money on corn for that year, and then it doesn't happen again for the next few years. It's just being prepared and being aware of what causes movement in the corn price. Anyway, guys, that's corn. Uh, that's trading corn futures or however you choose to trade it. Uh, interesting commodity, worth checking out. See you next one, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.